Hi, Rick here from Iron for Models, RC specialist for over 40 years. In this video, I'm going to cover the new Saima X8W real-time FPV quadcopter. If you're looking for an inexpensive way of getting into proper real-time FPV flying, the Saima's pretty much got the market licked on that. After the success of the X5C, this is the new X8W. It's going to be a great step if you're moving on from a non-FPV model onto FPV flying, or even if you're maybe just checking out um, if FPV is for you and maybe you're thinking of moving on to something a bit more special in the future. So in this video, I'm going to cover the assembling of your Simon quadcopter, uh, fitting all the props, etc. Again, already and showing you how all the functions work. But first of all, you need to put it together. So the first thing you need to do is you need to dig out. You've got your charger, you've got your battery, and you've got your adapter. So the first thing we need to do is just connect that into the charger, and that part will get plugged into the mains. Okay, so now we've got that plugged into the mains, you will notice there'll be a small red light indicator will come on in the charger. So simply plug the balance lead into the charger. Now you'll notice two notches and then two notches here. So remember you plug it in the right way and it's a balanced charger. So what it'll now do is the battery pack, which is a 7.4 volt battery pack. So there's actually two individual cells inside here. It will actually charge the cells individually. So what you're waiting for is for this red light to go out sorry the green light to go out because the green light shows that it's charging and when it goes out that is it charged so that'll take approximately 200 minutes okay while the battery's charging what we'll do is we'll now assemble the rest of the model so what you're going to need is you're going to need your screwdriver screws and you'll need your landing gear so the landing gear doesn't matter what corner it goes into simply pushing it in to place you take your screws stick that up there good okay and then we just screw the screws in the screwdriver that you get with it is a little bit on the small side so if you do have something a little bit bigger it would probably be a little bit better but we'll work with what we are given Ooh. Snip that down till it stops and then just do that with all the rest of them. Okay, now we've got the legs all screwed on, we're now going to move on to the prop guards. Now, it's quite simple to fit the prop guards. There's just a small lip there, which you just, whoops, pull out because the prop guards are removable. Now, regards to prop guards in flying, prop guards do pride a little bit of turbulence when you're flying. So I tend to find, use these as a training aid, but once you feel you kind of pass the bumping and bashing stage, you best take them off. When you start flying around fast, these do create a little bit of turbulence and you do notice it. And I just find that they it flies better and it's more stable without the prop guards. But certainly for being a beginner, you're better off, or better off fitting them. Now, back to the screws. Now, the ones we want to use, now for putting the undercarriage on, we use the ones with the heads on them little washer sorry and then for this part we want to use these ones okay so we have the prop guard slipped in and now we're just going to get our screw and we're just going to pop it in the holes come up next up next screw and then that's the prop guard on and do the rest with the, do, do the same with the other three legs. Okay, now that we've got all the prop guards on, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move on to the camera. One of the easiest parts to fit, you just simply slide it into the track, kind of like a camera hot shoot, slides in like that. Now, if you want to remove it, there's a small button at the back there you just push in and then the camera moves off. So if you want to get your skills in first before you fit the camera, you can do. But the camera actually feels quite good, actually it's good quality. And then there's a small plug at the back here. Let's move forward and that just plugs in there and there you have it. And unfortunately the camera, you can't, put, you can't move it while you're in flight. So you've got to kind of pre-position it to the angle you want. And that's the little FPV transmitter at the back, which is what will be sending the video signal from the camera back to your smartphone. 
Now, though the props come actually ready fitted, I'm just going to show you how to change them because you may actually break them. So first thing, you just remove the spinner and then you need to twist this little locking mechanism and then the pin, using the small screwdriver, can get pushed out. Now, that's a bit of a fidgety job. Just got to sort of get it in there. Oh, am I going the wrong way? I was going the wrong way. Then the pin can only come out one side. Simply remove the lock and then the prop can come off. And you see the little drive there and then the hex in the back of there. So that can just go back on. Slide the locking mechanism on. As I say, there's a cutout in one side. So you need to line it up with a small hole that's there. And then once in, turn that 90 degrees. You'll hear a wee click and that's it locked in place. And then that is just a push fit over the top and that's your prop changed. Okay, now that we've got all the props on, uh, we're gonna move on to the controller. So first thing we need to do, of course, is we need to put batteries in it. So four AA batteries, as always, ensure that you've got the polarity of your batteries correct, otherwise it's not gonna work. Back on the controller and then should be ready to power on. Now you need to, of course, put the battery in your model. So once the battery is charged, to put it into the model, just want to open up the door, V clip on the back there. Now we will have the battery lead inside the model. So obviously you've got the polarized connection there. So the battery can just slip in there. Want to tuck the, uh, if I just move that round a bit, just want to tuck that balance lead in out the way. And then you can plug the main battery in. Now, again, they're polarized connections, so they'll only go in one way. So just pop them in nice and snug, and then just tuck the cables in out of the way, shut the door, make sure that's clipped in. And the on-off button, go on, sorry about that, my microphone, um, is here on the side, and that's where we're gonna be switching it off and on. Okay, now we're almost ready to rock, but a couple more things we have to do before we go. First thing we need to do is fit the FPV uh, phone, smartphone bracket onto the controller, which just simply pushes onto the top. And this is where our FPV screen is going to be. It's going to be right on top of the transmitter. So that's going to work out really well. But first of all, before we do anything, we need to download the app. So if you go to your manual, just flick into it, you'll have... Uh, you'll have uh, two um, QR scan codes, one for iPhone and one for Android, and these need to be scanned uh, to get the uh, app downloaded. So if you have the uh, QR code scanner app on your phone, you want to basically get that activated, and then we can, so I'm using uh, iPhone, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scan the code, and just now, I don't know if you can see that, it's asking me if I want to open that, we can say yes. Let me try to swivel that so you can see it. And what we've got here. So basically, it's just taking me to the App Store where it's going to allow me to uh, download that. So we're just going to clip on Get and Install. So if you've got an Android, you can go to obviously the Play Store and download it that way as well. Okay, once you've got the app downloaded, the first thing you need to do before you open the app is you actually need to connect to the model camera itself. So the first thing you need to do is switch on the model itself. Once you've got that powered on, it takes about 20 seconds for the uh, FPV camera to go live and appear as a network, network on your uh, settings. So the first thing you wanna do, click on the settings on your phone. Now I'm kind of doing this upside down, so I hope you can read it so we're going to click on wi-fi settings so just now it's connected to my home network so what we're looking for is see at the moment the camera will still be booting up but what we should be receiving is i'll just go back come back in one that's one see what it says fpv wi-fi click on that one and now it's not password protected so it should connect to it no bother at all once that's done you want to tell that again so you can see it you're going to scroll through till you find your app there's the app there smart app and there we go we've now got the fpv feed coming through okay now for the flying part so the first thing we need to do is we need to switch it on so the first thing you need to do is turn the controller on 
then turn the craft on. That was the small red switch on the bottom of the craft. And you'll see it now initialising. Now to arm the motors, what you have to do is you have to take the throttle stick all the way forward, it beeps all the way back and that is now the motor arm. So if I give a small amount of throttle, and you see the motors are now ready to spin up. And then go to the actual app. So we just scroll through and then you've got your Saima app and then that will now just boot up like that and you can click on start. And that's you more or less ready to go. Now to cover some of the basic flight functions, um, it has two flying modes, a sort of beginner's mode and an advanced mode. So to activate the different modes, you've got the button on here, which you can push in, and then that will be whether you're on advanced mode or on beginner mode. Now, this model's also got orientation control, and what that is, normally the way it works with any quadcopter or any raid control car or plane is, when you push your stick forward to go forward, the model will go forward following its nose. And however, when you find the models pointing towards yourself, obviously you've got to imagine that what was normally right will become actually the craft's right, which will be your left. So you can get a wee bit disorientated. Now, orientation control means regardless of what way round the model is pointing, if you push the stick away from yourself, the craft will go away from you. Now to activate that, it's the same button, but you push it and hold it like that and that's it now into orientation control and you've got as you can now see you've got the LEDs flashing so if I move that propeller out of the way you'll see the green LEDs flashing now regardless of what way around it is uh, forward will be forward back will be back left will be right and so sorry left will be left and right will be right so that's handy if you fly quite far away from yourself and you get a bit disorientated now if you want to um, reset the orientation of the model as in reset it to whatever what may, way the model is pointing. You can actually do that just by running the two sticks and you'll see the LEDs flashing on the model and that's basically the, um, it's the head lock is now being changed to whichever. So it's handy if you have a crash, you go over, pick your model, you've now turned in a different orientation, you can reset the orientation. Another handy one actually is resetting the gyro. So if the model becomes a little bit unstable or doesn't seem to hover very well and you want to recalibrate the model on a flat surface, get the model on a flat surface and once again you just pull the sticks back down into the other direction, you see you get very fast strobe light on the LEDs and that is the model now reset. Uh, one other feature you've got also on the right hand button up here, that is basically the stunt mode. So when you push that mode in, the uh, model will actually be able to do flips and aerobatics etc. But if you're doing that, make sure you have got plenty height. Um, and that is it for the flight controls. Other little bits you've got is these. These are trimmers. These are like, you know, when you get the tracking done in your car so it tracks in a straight line. So if you find when you're hovering it may be still drifting off to the right all the time, you can actually compensate it with this. And there's also a diagram here on the display will actually tell you where the trims actually are. So you've got all the information up here as well. So that's the Saima X8 FPV quadcopter. If you're looking for a entry level budget uh, FPV machine that's all inclusive, this is very, very well worth uh, considering. It flies extremely well, it's nice and stable, and having features like the orientation control on a model of this price is actually a very handy feature indeed. A couple of points I'll just make just before I go. Um, a couple of things to remember, unlike other camera quadcopters which record their video straight onto an SD card in the camera itself and also photos onto the camera itself and some of them are in HD at the moment giving very good results. Remember this is more of an FPV machine so the video is actually recorded on your smartphone itself and so are the photos. Now it's being the video is being streamed back in a sort of compressed Wi-Fi signal so the quality although acceptable is not as high end as models that actually record straight onto a card. So if you're looking for a photographic machine this might not give the best results. However, if you're just looking for a fun FPV machine or maybe testing out the waters on some ideas and you're maybe going to spend your money on something more elaborate like a Phantom, etc., then definitely this will actually do extremely well. Hope you found my video helpful. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, to be kept informed on the latest products and reviews and how-to videos. I'm Rick from Marinville Models, RC specialist for over 40 years. Thank you very much.